Blossoms on the plum, wild wind and merry, leaves upon the cherry, and one swallow come. Blossoms on the plum, wild wind and merry, leaves upon the cherry, and one swallow come. Blossoms on the plum, wild wind and merry, leaves upon the cherry, and one swallow come. Blossoms on the plum, blossoms on the cherry, leaves upon the cherry, and leaves upon the cherry, and one swallow come. On Saturday morning, Miss Benton and I were sitting out on, in the sun on the deck. And we were pondering what we wanted to say to you, the graduates of Orchard Valley. We considered this class's shared stories and wide variety of personalities and your accomplishments. And all of a sudden, Miss Benton just started giggling and she said, you know what? They're a lot like spicy chili. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> so I'm sure we've all had chili before, but each ingredient in a chili like stands on its own, but at the same time, it adds to the flavor profile of the entire dish. And might we say spicy chili is not a subtle flavor. Um, and in the same way, um, this class is, I wouldn't describe them as subtle. I would describe them as very passionate and rather fiery. So I think spicy chili is an apt metaphor for this crew. I can go with that. And I mean, what this looks like in the student body is just like a variety of personalities. So we have artists, we have writers, we have, we have kids who like to jump from idea to idea. We have kids that are more methodical in their thinking. Uh, we have some kids that are quite silly and some that are quite serious. And I would have to say though that at their best, this group can channel that variety and vim and vigor into accomplishing really great things together. And then we spent time on Saturday thinking of examples that illustrated this. And there were many. We can share a few with you right now. In third grade, we were planning our garden. And first you had to decide what is it you were going to grow then plant the seeds and grow them in the windows and tend, tend them. And with the help of Cypress's father, we turned the soil, um, banged out the, the clumps of grass and, and let the soil fall and then added our seedlings and nutrients. From this group effort that took many months, we had enough food not only to make wonderful, a wonderful meal for your parents, but also to do donate food to the Vermont Food Bank. Now, in a project that was very similar to what happened in third grade, in seventh grade, you all made a farm stand garden mm. with Ms. Davis. Mm. So you were responsible for planting all of the food that you were going to grow in sixth grade before you went on summer vacation. And then when you came back in the fall, you spent your afternoons and on the land class harvesting and cleaning up all of the food that you were going to sell. And you got to wear these very fashionable aprons. Thank you, Ms. Davis, that had a lovely logo on it, Orchard Valley Farm Stand. And you sold your produce to the Orchard Valley community. And I remember that you weren't selling only the vegetables in raw form, but you also made some value added items like pesto. And there were a couple of you that were having a particularly giggly exchange in the eighth grade classroom in the back corner by the sink when you were trying to make pesto in the blender and it was getting all over the place and not just staying in the blender. It was pretty <laughs> funny. But the fruits of your labor, so to speak, were raising enough money to buy soccer goals for mm -hmm. the recess mm -hmm. field. Great. So we're gonna veer away from food a little bit. And I always liked to work in food when we were having lessons because I knew that was always gonna be a hit with this group. So it's appropriate that we're including food. Um, but in fourth grade, um, we did another project that required great group effort. And we all um, took sections of East Montpelier. We got in our cars and we took notes about what we saw in the different sections that we were traveling. Um, houses, buildings, fields, we would take notes and then came back and created a composite map, um, a unique map of East Montpelier. And then we put it out in the hallway for all to see. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. That's good. 
In fifth grade, we created a walkabout play. This was complete with a coffin, a corpse, entertainers that would tell jokes to theater goers as we moved from spot to spot. And at the very end, the last production with our families, uh, we even had a student who fell from a tree. And that wasn't really in the script, but we all agreed to add a bit of um, excitement to the play. And thankfully, there were no broken bones. At least during that play, but there were later on in the soccer field in middle school. <laughs> Yikes. You also designed and sh uh, the shape and color patterns of the first Orchard Valley um, sand mandala. Um, there, that required a lot of negotiation and give and take in creating that design. But once it was completed, um, pouring sand ever so carefully, we opened our doors and invited other students from classes to come and see. And you were so proud when eighth graders would come through, seventh graders, first graders, and would ask you how you did that. Um, it was quite a feat and again, required lots of teamwork. And then in sixth grade, we did a variety of projects together, but there are a few that really stick out for me. So in sixth grade, your class play was called Voices from a Medieval Village. And, so good. and each one of you was a character within this village. And what was unique about this play is it was told entirely through monologue. So we had a glimpse into mm -hmm. like the personal lives and challenges that each character was facing. Now, the interesting thing with monologues is that they really are a solo act when you're delivering mm -hmm. them uh, on stage. But what was interesting about producing this play is that it wasn't a solo act to rehearse and produce. And so you were so supportive of each other when you had to speak your part and work on your character and you offered such thoughtful suggestions and really bolstered each other's courage, I think, to take on such a big thing as a monologue in front of a lot of people. So although you worked individually on your monologues, in the end, they all came together to form a large cohesive play. Now, in addition to the sixth grade play, there was the seventh grade play where the mountain meets the moon. Mm -hmm. And great, great story. And this play was chosen for this particular class uh, because it had a lot of characters in it and a lot of scenery. And it was to be done as a puppet play to add another layer of challenge too. And so the class created over a dozen rod puppets. And in addition to that, they had to figure out how to do 10 different scenes using two refrigerator boxes and various <laughs> pieces of cardboard. And not only that, but our timeline was really tight. And so the canvas you're on campus became an art studio. And there were times when there were four of you working on the same composition and your brush strokes were blending and mixing over the top of each other. So that in the end, the scenery looked like it was really painted by one person. Wow. But it was painted by one class, Beautiful. which is you. Um, and I have to say, lastly, a huge highlight that stands out for me is the way that you all were with your first grade buddies. Mm -hmm. So you had the opportunity to be first grade buddies as seventh graders and as eighth graders. First time ever, I think. Yeah, had that happen. I know. So and really, it couldn't have happened to a better class. Um, you just you really supported those first graders and made them feel so, so special. I remember you walking them down the hallway to assemblies. I remember how much the first graders' eyes would light up after they shared an assembly and you would all stand up and give them a round of applause or give them high fives afterwards. And there were the fun things that we would do together, like uh, shaping bread at Michaelmas, carving pumpkins. Uh, later on in eighth grade, you had an epic jump roping fest with them. And that was a lot of fun. Um, but you'll appreciate this, Miss Ely. There, um, the eighth graders taught them how to play thumbs up and they were the eighth graders were so so what do I say they were just so sweet because first graders would press down their thumbs and it would be really obvious who it was <laughs> but when the eighth graders had to stand up and guess they of course wouldn't guess which first grader pushed down their thumb it was a very sweet relationship to see unfold over the course of those two years and eighth graders you definitely built up these kids with so much compassion, warmth, and joy. Nice. So all of these examples demonstrate how even with your unique and colorful personalities, you were able to join hands and accomplish great things. We could only have the time to highlight a few, 
but there are big and small examples every day. You are a skillful group in coming together in successful and powerful ways. In conclusion, think of your Orchard Valley class as, here comes some more food, a warm, sweet, and tasty apple crisp. Fresh Orchard Valley apples, cinnamon, brown sugar, the finest flour and oats, all coming together in blissful unity. Yes, you are all very different, but together you are amazing. And right now, what our world needs is less division and more direction. Mm -hmm. And I think that you can do this. You're up to the task. Our time of learning from home this year through remote mm -hmm. learning only points more strongly to the need for all of us to come together in human community. And you have many gifts to offer the greater community. All through your life, you're going to be part of larger groups, whether it's a sports team or an art club, mm -hmm. theater club, a larger, a larger member of the class of 2024. Regardless of what the group is, we want to encourage you to forge new trails together, to really be a working member of that team so that we can create the kind of world we want to see, one that's kinder, and more inclusive. Together, you can. Yeah, together, you can be the change that you wanna see. We are so thankful to have shared these years in this journey with you. And we're excited to see you continue to grow and to continue being the kind of person that you are now becoming. We wish you the best in high school and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rose Houston. I have been at Orchard Valley for 11 years. I started at Orchard Valley when I was four. In the 11 years I have been at Orchard Valley, my favorite block was definitely geometry or our play blocks. I like geometry because the artistic part of it really helped me get into art. My favorite play was in seventh grade, where the mountain meets the moon. I have done a lot of projects. The first project I did was in fifth grade, our state projects. I did fifth grade twice, so I got to do two states. My first year I did Alaska, and my second year I did Texas. In each grade, we go on a field trip off campus starting in third grade. My all-time favorite trip was in seventh grade, our Quebec trip. We went to Quebec for four days with our French teacher, and it was super fun. I will never forget that trip. On the first night, we went to a restaurant where you had a skillet in front of you and you cooked your own meal on it. We also went biking, which I thought was super fun considering I hate biking. Orchard Valley shaped my life in a very good way. I learned how to knit, sew, woodwork, and many more things. I have met all my best friends there and formed relationships with teachers and students that I'll never forget. I would like to thank my parents, my mom, Madalief, and my dad, Jacob, and my bonus parents, Catherine and Marcus, for making it all possible. I would also like to thanks all, thank all the teachers that have helped me through all the rough patches, especially Miss Benton for enjoying me and accepting me for who I am. I would also like to thank Miss Camletti, who always put a smile on my face and made me laugh every time I was having a hard day. I'll always remember Orchard Valley as a home away from home. My name is Rowan McClellan. I've been a student at Orchard Valley Waldorf School for 10 years, longer than most teachers, my current class teacher included. Before I attended Orchard Valley, I attended a local preschool that followed several Waldorf principles, but was not Waldorf per se. Many of my earliest memories of Orchard Valley are of climbing trees and playing in the woods with my friends. Some learning experiences that I remember fondly in a sort in ascending order of grades are as follows. I remember building forts by the gnomes crack with Miss Julia as being fun and being disgruntled when Miss Ely refused to teach me fractions. As far as fourth grade learning experiences go, I enjo enjoyed both the geography and Norse mythology blocks, specifically making maps of Vermont. Furthermore, I enjoyed the Burton Island trip and finally learning fractions. During fifth grade, I remember enjoying the pentathlon training, especially the javelins. Sixth grade brought a new teacher, which, while few others rivaled Miss Ely as far as bringing younger children joy and knowledge, I was ready for a change. Mrs. Benton, with her easygoing nature and occasionally somewhat okay puns, was similar to Miss Ely, but she was easier for my sixth grade self to learn from. 
Learning about geometry was no doubt my favorite part of sixth grade, as it combined both math and precise drawing. The seventh grade class trip to Quebec City was certainly memorable. For those who weren't there, the events of which I speak weren't some explanation. I wasn't feeling well when we started driving, but by the time we made it to Quebec City, I was sick enough not to enjoy some amazing, I'm sure, fondue. Anyways, during the afternoon of the second day, we were getting ice cream, and I had just been handed my ice cream when I was sick all over my arms, the floor, and most regrettably of all, my ice cream. I felt better the next day and spent it with my parents who were good enough to drive up from Vermont. The day after that, I rejoined my class and the rest of the trip passed without issue. My favorite part from 8th grade as far as topics of learning go was geometry. However, my all-time favorite part of 8th grade, and probably my entire time at Orchard Valley Waldorf School, was the Bolton Ski Program. I have many memories of skiing with my friends through the trails I knew better than the back of my hand. Because really, how well do you know the back of your hands? If not for the Bolton Ski Program, I would never have gained the passion for snow sports that I have today, and therefore, it's partially because of the Bolton Ski Program that I chose to do backcountry skiing for my 8th grade project. If there's one thing that Orchard Valley has taught me that many other schools would have neglected, it is how to keep an open mind. That is something I think can be more valuable than knowledge. Life is all about experiences, and Orchard Valley was definitely quite the experience. It has been a long road, but through the good and the bad of it all, my class was always there, and for that, I am grateful. I'll never forget the memories we shared, like when we did our first grade hike together in first grade, and when we were so innocent. I remember in third grade when we went to Croca and when Zach came back from the ER after having an allergic reaction to a bee sting and how he told us about all the Mountain Dew he drank and what a blast he had had, minus the fact that he almost died. Personally, my favorite trip was in fifth grade when we went to Burton Island. I remember playing games and biking all around the island and catching fish on the dock. We did so much together. I was very disappointed to hear that the sailing trip was canceled. I wish that we could still do that just so I could have more memories with you guys. Each of you has played a huge part in my life, and that includes Miss Benton and, Ms. and Mrs. Ely. They played one of the most important roles, which was teaching me everything I know today, like math and Greek mythology and much more. And I'd like to thank all the other teachers here at Orchard Valley. Each of you taught me something important, such as knitting, carving, gardening, patience, music, and so much more. This is not to say my experience was perfect. There are many things I wish I could go back and change, but after all, I'm only human. There are many things I won't miss at the school, like getting coded in burdock each recess, but I will truly miss the soccer games with a class. But most of all, I will miss my friends and their humor, and yes, even our arguments. I faced many challenges at the school, like the knighting ceremony in sixth grade and the pentathlon in fifth grade. But throwing a javelin or a discus is nowhere near as hard as saying goodbye to these amazing people, these amazing friends that I spent half my life with, that I fought with and laughed with and camped and hiked and learned with. Some people waste time wondering what they're going to do later in their life, but I prefer to move one step at a time and make the most of what I have and make more memories to smile about. But, and I can assure you the memories here at this school were ones to smile about. I remember in kindergarten being terrified of going to school but all the fear disappeared when I saw my friends. It just goes to show how much a friendly smile can change someone's day. From the moment I saw my friends to the moments in recess, digging up rocks and pretending it was pirate treasure, to the moments in first grade with our eighth grade buddies, to the stories Mrs. Ely used to read to us in second grade, to the winter feast in third grade, to Norse mythology in fourth grade, to the pentathlon in fifth grade, and to the nighting ceremony in sixth, and also having a first grade buddy for seventh and eighth grade, yes, it's definitely been quite the experience, but now it's time to flip the page and start a new chapter. I've been dreading this and yet anticipating this the most. So on this note, I will wish everyone a great year in high school next year, and I hope we all stay in touch to new beginnings. Hello, my name is Siles, and I've been at Orchard Valley for nine years. At the start of kindergarten, I was attending Craftsbury Academy, Crash Fury seemed fine, but deep down I knew I was not getting the type of education that I needed. So one quarter of the way through kindergarten, my sister and I started at Orchard Valley. Kindergarten at Orchard Valley was simple and fun. 
We got to chop veggies, dig holes in the dirt, and make silk forts. Soon, kindergarten was over, and it was time for us to go to first grade with all the big kids. I remember at the rose ceremony, it was rainy, and all the eighth graders looked much bigger than they actually were. And then there was Mrs. Ely, who was kind to all of us, and, there, and she was there when we needed her. First grade was a time of exploration as we started to learn the alphabet and simple math. Mrs. Ely would draw pictures that represented a letter of the alphabet in a creative way. And then we all had to guess what the letter was. Second and third grade was a blur as we learned about the saints and how in more complex math. Third grade, we went on our first school trip. We went to Korka where we played games and slept in lean-tos. By fourth grade, our class had grown from 12 students to 16. Fourth grade was a year that we learned about Norse gods and the history of Vermont. Our class trip in fourth grade was, in my opinion, the best one. We went to Burton Island on Lake Champlain. At Burton Island, we got to bike around and fish in the lake. It was basically everything a fourth grader would want. As fifth grade rolled around, all of my classmates and I were not young enough to be cute little kids, but not old enough to be mature big kids. Instead, we were kind of in the middle. Fifth grade was the grade that our teacher, Mrs. Ely, was battling cancer. I remember the day she came back, everyone in our class smothered her in hugs. Fifth grade was the year that we studied ancient cultures. I remember our play about Egypt, and we got to do it in the woods. I also remember that fifth grade was the year that we could play soccer. So we did, every single day. As we entered sixth grade, we got to brag that we were in middle school, but realistically, we just moved down the hall a little more. Sixth grade was also the year that Mrs. Ely could not teach us anymore. Everyone was sad about this, but our class was lucky enough to get another great teacher, Mrs. Benton. In sixth grade, we were still really into soccer, and we played it every day. Sixth grade was also a good year because we got to go on two class trips, one of which was the medieval games. The medieval games were held we not had all our school this time, but that was fine with us because we got to spend the night at another school. The medieval games were just a warm up for our next class trip, which was hiking the White Mountains. At the White Mountains, we stayed in a lodge that had surprisingly nice beds. We hiked three mountains that were pretty big. The night I came back, my bed had never felt better. Sixth grade was also the year that we got to go downhill skiing. In fact, it was the first time I had ever gone downhill skiing. Every week, I would look forward to the Fridays when we got to go skiing. Seventh grade was definitely a strange year. We were the oldest class in the school, but we were only in seventh grade. This meant that we had first grade buddies two years in a row, which was actually quite a great experience because our class was forced to be more mature. In seventh grade, we got to go to Quebec, my experience in Quebec was basically a non-stop museum of old buildings and exquisite food. It was one of the best cultural experiences I had ever had. By 8th grade, if you had not gotten hurt from soccer, you were basically a magician. As the year went on, everything seemed normal, but in reality, COVID-19 was coming. COVID-19 hit hard, and our class on our last year at Orchard Valley could not be finished in the way it usually was. Everything was online and we could not connect face to face with our friends or our teachers. Online learning was a pain, but I knew it was a necessary step in battling the virus. The education at Orchard Valley has definitely shaped me into the person I am today. For example, when I want to do something fun, I go outside and ride my bike instead of sitting down and playing video games for hours on end. In high school, my Waldorf education will stand out because when I am asked to draw a picture, I will be there long after everyone is gone, still working on the smallest detail, and the rest of my class drew a stick figure and called it good. With the year almost done, and I, as I reflect on all the years, all the good times, and all the bad, I can see just how lucky I was to go to this school. Thank you. So I'm Liliana and I joined this class in second grade. 
Looking back and all the memories of my time with this class, I realized how much I'm going to miss this school and the people in it. When I first joined this class, I had gone from public education to the Waldorf ways, as they say. It was definitely a hard transition, but I'm so glad I did. I've grown to love our crazy class. I've also grown to love the crazy, enthusiastic teachers. I think my favorite memory was this, for this class was our seventh grade Quebec trip. I loved the time we spent together there. That trip was so amazingly planned out. Um, another one of my favorite memories with this class was the parties that Forrest used to have. I felt like our class was really close at that point, and I really enjoyed spending time with, our, with them out of school. Through my years at Orchard Valley, I'm remembering how much I love how they teach and how you can actually remember what you've learned. I love our, how we do class plays every year. I think my favorite play was the Egyptian play we did in fifth grade. Orchard Valley has taught me so much, and I'm really sad that I wasn't even able to finish my last year here. Online school has proven to be a lot harder than I expected. I want to thank my teachers and all the people who have supported me through my years. After about six years at this school, I feel an attachment to it and I'm really sad to go. My name is Isla Steiner. I have been going to Orchard Valley Waldorf School for seven years. For kindergarten through first grade, I attended Princeton Waldorf School in New Jersey. When I was seven years old, my family moved to Vermont from New Jersey. That was a little into my second grade year, and I didn't know anyone at my new school. But, it was, but I was still welcomed with open arms. Mrs. Ely was the teacher of my class, and she was great. Even though I was new, I fit in right away. And because there were so few people in my class, it wasn't very hard to make friends. Over the years, I have learned a lot of things at OVWS, but there are some things that were especially fun for me to learn about. I always loved when we had blocks on mythology and ancient cultures. I, I also loved drawing and all the art we were able to do in school. I remember going to on a class trip every year since I was in third grade. I really enjoyed going on these trips, but my favorite ones were the Quebec trip and the White Mountains trip. Going to this school has taught me a lot of things, but most of all it has taught me to always be kind, to respect others, and to follow my heart in everything I do. I have had three different amazing teachers over the course of my time at Waldorf schools. The first was Miss Kessler. She was my kindergarten teacher in New Jersey and was always kind and patient with me in my class. The second was Mrs. Ely, who was our teacher from second through part of fifth grade. She is the kind of person who will always make you smile. And the third is Miss Benton, who is our current teacher. She has been teaching us since sixth grade and has been able to put up with us through the beginning of our teenage years. All three of them have taught me a great deal and all three of them are, were very kind. But just because they were kind doesn't mean they would let us misbehave. It was nice to have the same teachers every year. It was also nice going to a small school, so you knew everyone there. I re very much enjoyed going to Orchard Valley, and I intend to continue going to a small school into my high school years. I loved going to Orchard Valley, and when I was younger, I would get really sad any time I had to miss school. I think that this school has given me an amazing education, and I am so grateful to all of the teachers here. I'm also so thankful that I was able to learn in such an accepting environment. It was fun learning things that you wouldn't typically learn in a normal public school, like knitting, crocheting, woodworking, and more. I remember at recess, our class used to make up games to play, and we would play them for a month or so, and then we would make up a new one. When we got older, though, and were allowed to play soccer, we played it almost every recess when the weather allowed. Our class is not always been the best at listening to our teachers and I'm glad that they were able to put up with us for so long. It can't have been easy dealing with us for eight years. It's funny looking back and seeing all the changes our school has gone through and remembering what it was like on the first day at or Orchard Valley. This school has gone through so many changes and so have I. OVWS has definitely had a huge impact on my life. As I write my 8th grade graduation speech, this ceremony still feels so far away. 
I can't believe it's time to move on from Orchard Valley, and yet here we are. I didn't realize how I took Orchard Valley for granted until we had to learn remotely. I didn't realize how much I thrived on seeing my classmates and my teachers. I missed having art class in person with my classmates, and I also missed having handle class. I missed the inside jokes and laughter. I missed being able to hang out with my classmates without having to make plans. It was the in-person moments that made Orchard Valley so special. There are so many memories that I will hold close to me as I look back on my time from, at Orchard Valley. A story that I will never forget, forget is the first time going down to the Gnome's Crack, which is a special place on campus. Mrs. Ely told us a story about how gnomes used to mine there until a greedy monster came through leaving a gorge in the ground. The name Gnome's Crack evolved from that. I didn't e even understand why Gnome's Crack was so funny until about fourth grade. There was also an incident a few years ago when, on the first day of school, Miss Camilletti said lesser in her handwork verse and then changed it to smaller. On the second day, uh, yeah, our class being who we are realized this minuscule change in the verse and corrected her. Miss Camilletti informed us that she was making sure we were on our toes. From that day on, I said lesser as loud as possible. I guess I am a little stubborn. I have many memories with my friends. I remember one cold recess in 8th grade, Liliana and I didn't want to go outside, so we hid under the supply closet and ate candy. Miss Benton thought we were my snibbling on paper when she came back to check on us. She, um, she was quite surprised. Instead of two mice, she found us. We ended up getting caught, but, but by that time, recess was over. At Orchard Valley, I was able to accomplish many different art projects. I loved the charcoal drawings that we did in art class in sixth grade and the pants that I made in eighth. One of our class plays I will never forget is our fourth grade plus class plays when I was literally a cat that was heavier than the world. We also got to go on this amazing class trip each year. In seventh grade, my, my seventh grade class trip was my favorite. We went to Quebec with a French teacher. That trip was really fun. Me and my classmates bonded as we struggled to speak French. I would also let, oh. I would like to thank all of the wonderful faculty for making Orchard Valley such an amazing place for so many people. Thank you for giving me so much support for the best eight years of my life, especially supporting my de development with my learning disabilities. I have been able to cre create special bonds with all my teachers at Orchard Valley. I will carry these for the rest of my life. Next, I would like to thank all of my classmates who lived through all of these memories with me. You are the people I laughed and cried with. You. You are the people I get mad at, but also love. These people are the pe people that made Orchard Valley my second home. Lastly, I would like to thank my family. All of the bumps in the road I've come across, I've never had to go, go through alone. My family loved me unconditionally, no matter how much of a pain I was being. My parents drove me, and, me to and from school and put up with me. As you can see, Orchard Valley is an amazing and new, unique school, and I've been so lucky, lucky to be here. My name is Ethan Nightmark. I have attended Orchard Valley since grade one. Prior to my family's move to Vermont eight years ago, I attended a small private Waldorf school on Long Island in New York State. Due to the fact that my New York kindergarten did not provide Waldorf Elementary School, my family moved up to Vermont so I could attend OVWS. I'm pretty sure we made a good decision. I arrived in first grade scared in my shorts. I knew no one and as far as I was concerned, I belonged anywhere but here. But I would soon blend in. And I have to say, I really enjoyed my first year. I was introduced to an incredible class teacher, a teacher who would stand by my side for many years, and the class was made up of some pretty good kids. Then came second grade. We got some new recruits. It was odd seeing new faces just a year in, but we made it work, and second grade could not have gone by quicker. We really zipped through the year. School was going good, and I was learning the ropes. Then came third grade. Wow. We started studying heavy stuff. The year was made up of a lot of Jewish history, and Mrs. Ely was not going to hold back on the details. Men whipping other men, thousands of people being forced to work against their will, babies thrown into crocodile-infested waters minutes after seeing the light of day. Plus, I'm Jewish, so that kind of scared the living daylights out of me. Nonetheless, I kind of enjoyed the studies. Nothing out of the ordinary came with fifth grade, but then, weeks before we started fifth grade, we got some disturbing news. Our beloved class teacher had thyroid cancer. That wasn't great, as no cancer is. Svenja Donlin ended up taking over for our sixth savior. Though Mrs. Yelly made a speedy recovery, she decided to go down a new path. 
a path that would take her to enrollment. So Miss Benton came along to save the day. And save the day she did. The first day of sixth grade felt just like the first day of first grade. Miss Benton soon would make us feel at home, but it took a little getting used to. But sixth grade overall was a good year. Seventh grade was also good. Nothing major happened as for eighth grade. I am not going to lie, there were a few ups and downs. Losing classmates, disappointing outcomes, unfortunate incidents, and of course, we got dumped out of school due to COVID-19. So, so much for that. But we made it work, and we will continue to make it work. Through plays to projects, field trips to hikes, to, uh, discussions to arguments, I enjoyed myself here. As excited as I am to start up, in, uh, start up again in a new school, I will miss OVWS. My name is Harper Gulledge, and I have attended Orchard Valley for three years. Before coming to Orchard Valley in 2017, I attended two other Waldorf schools. During my last year, we moved from Asheville, North Carolina to New Northern New England, and in 2012, I started first grade at Monadnock Waldorf School in Keene, New Hampshire. My teacher was Mr. McGuigan. He was very loved among my class. We enjoyed his humor, and all of us realized how deeply he cared. So it came as a surprise to find out that at the end of fourth grade, he was going to retire and move to Idaho. One of my favorite memories from these four years was that my best friend Beckley and I would go to horse camp together every summer. It was something that we both looked forward to. After my fourth grade year, I began going to Pine Hill Waldorf School in Wilton, New Hampshire. My teacher was Mrs. Kerr. I had known her from her time teaching at Mananoc and was eager to see if what I remembered of her was true. It was. She was awesome because she held us to a high standard, no matter what. Originally, when I joined the class, I felt left out. But towards the end of my time there, I really hoped that I would be part of the class's journey through 8th grade and move on to 9th grade to have mowing with them. After the pentathlon in 5th grade, one of my good friends Campbell and I went on vacation in Burlington with our parents. Soon after, my parents told me I would not be returning to Pine Hill the following year and that my dad had received a promotion in Vermont. In August of 2017, we moved to Vermont and I started at Orchard Valley a few days later. I remember getting there and walking across the pavement to my new 6th grade class. I wanted to disappear at that moment. After my first day, I did not want to go back, but if I could have looked into the future, I would have seen how much I would grow the next three years at Orchard Valley. There has been a few common threads during this time that have kept me going. I've continued riding, expanding competitions into mounted shooting, and also have begun showing with Youth Equestrian Development Association. I've continued attending horse camp in New Hampshire with one of my best friends, Sachi. This along with playing lacrosse at U32, has kept me focused and made me strive to do good in school. This eighth grade year, there's been many things to look forward to, but they were cut short because of COVID-19. However, completing the eighth grade project and having a gecko as a class pet were highlights. For my project, I trained a young horse named Remy. This was so fun and everything I could have hoped for. During the year, I have also enjoyed art class with Mrs. Benton, as well as games with Mr. Maynard. To be honest, my time at Orchard Valley has been a roller coaster of ups and downs, but in the end, I cannot imagine it any other way. So thank you, Miss Benton, and all the other talented teachers I've met in this experience. As this chapter closes and a new one opens, I only wish the best for all my classmates and teachers at Orchard Valley. Thank you. My name is Tobias Benson. I've been at Orchard Valley since fifth grade. Before that, I attended Craftsbury Academy. I've experienced and done a lot here at Orchard Valley and at Craftsbury. School has always been important to me and I've made it a personal priority. I've always wanted to learn and have searched for knowledge. But listen, I have to get back to quadratic formulas, so let's make this quick. Elementary school was kind of like a dream. It was so different. Well, I suppose that changing everything is kind of big. Where I lived, the people I went to school with, how often I saw my different parents. Kindergarten, my biggest worries were colors of markers and the gold painted chairs. In first and second grade, I worried a little bit more about work, but barely. I wanted to finish so I could look at the cool rocks the teacher had in the corner. It was nice back then. It was so careless, so free. Worrying more about who to hang out with at recess than other things. Third and fourth grade is where academics started to matter more. I was m memorizing multiplication tables and more complicated spelling rules. Then my dad was moving to Burlington both my brothers off to college, and a new school for me. Changing from schools was big and quite strange, but it wasn't as hard with good people uh, welcoming me in. 
I had come from a group of people who had known each other from so young that you didn't care what they thought of you. So it was kind of strange to move into one of those circles. Fifth grade was my one year with Mrs. Ely. She really welcomed me in and it's been nothing but kind. I remember we had an Egyptian mythology block I really enjoyed. The thing I remember from those years were the stories. I love the stories. We went to the pentathlon that year. I enjoyed it and training for it, especially the javelin toss. I even made some friends. Sixth grade was the transition from stories, fractions, and fantasy to decimals, history, and facts. In sixth grade, we were changing te teachers. Miss Benton was going to take over as our class teacher. In sixth grade, I was more part of everything now, and I was also getting used to the carpooling gig. I was finding I had liked math for a while, ever since third grade, and I was still enjoying it. We were really starting to move from stories and not a ton of homework to more history and more serious academics. I really found a love for learning at this time. This year we had the medieval games and became squires. I left uh, squiring for Miss uh, Peggy at, at the kindergarten. I found I enjoyed helping out while I did this. I kept doing it as long as I could and had a lot of fun hanging out with those kids. The medieval games were a lot of fun. It was cool seeing people from the pentathlon. As our play, the river turns the mill wheel and the wheel goes on forever. In seventh grade, I still continued with my search for knowledge. I still had fun with math and I was branching out, making new friends. I really started branching out that year, knowing everyone well and making friends in different classes. I had even made some friends in Essex, where my dad lives, over the summer. I could actually manage social interactions now, which was quite different from fifth grade. The year we went to Quebec, this is the year we went to Quebec as a class, which was an incredible trip. I had my first amazing first grade buddy, Sophia. We had a blast doing stuff together. It was a lot of fun. Now, on to this year, eighth grade. I really knew people around me the best I had yet, and I've had a great time this year learning and hanging out with people, the people of the school. I had my eighth grade project, which is pretty big. It was probably the biggest project I've ever done in school. I've had a lot of fun, uh, fun, uh, had a lot of fun spending time with Hugo Mesa, who was my mentor. It was a weird year with COVID-19. This is also the year I had my appendicitis and had to have surgery, which was exciting. I had my first, uh, or I had my second amazing buddy, Josephine. I had a lot of fun hanging out with her and doing stuff. I had a lot of great time doing stuff with her. There are a lot of people I have to thank for helping me through school. First, I want to thank the teachers. Big thanks to Mrs. Ely. She really helped me settle in, and is just all around a really stand-up person. Mrs. Camelotti taught me handwork, from knitting to woodworking, and could always have a good laugh. Heinz wasn't there the entire time, but he did a great job keeping a clean and safe woodworking class. Miss Peggy was really nice when I squired for her, and was always really nice after that, which I appreciate. Madame Harper was a really nice teacher and always had the best plans for trips. Danielle and Susan were really nice whenever I was talking with them or just walking by in the hall. Miss Kelly was fun as the after-school teacher and the on-the-land teacher. I would like to thank Hugo Mesa for being a very kind and good mentor on my 8th grade project. I couldn't have done it without him. I'd really like to thank my two first grade buddies for always being a ton of fun. And by the way, they're both really good at jump roping. Thank you so much to Miss Benton for being an amazing teacher and always bringing fun and engaging classes, no matter what the block was. She was also an, an exceptionally kind and caring person. I've learned so much from all the time you spent teaching us. I really can't thank my parents enough for always being there and always supporting me and my ambitions, but also for pushing me to do more and be a good person and teaching me life skills and manners. I left Craftsbury a totally different person. I've grown a lot and found my skills and faults. In all my time here, I have definitely grown and changed. I started at Orchard Valley in kindergarten, and I have attended it for nine years. Here are some of my favorite experiences that I remember the clearest. In kindergarten, I was happy to learn that each day I had a new food, and my favorite was bread day. One thing I did not like in kindergarten was nap time. Brew and I often tried to sneak over to each other, but we always got caught. In first grade, I remember the rose ceremony and walking down to the lower field. I felt shy and wondered why everyone was staring at me. That's when I met one of the kindest people I know, Mrs. Ely. I remember her smiling as she took my hand and brought me into the circle. Then my eighth grade buddy gave me a rose. 
I remember climbing Spruce Mountain later that year and feeling tired at the top. I did not want to walk back down because I couldn't feel my legs. Other memories beyond first grade to come to mind as well. In third grade, we had our farming block, which was lots of fun. I remember going to Quebec City in seventh grade. I remember getting there and being so excited for the trip. It was a long car ride, but it was one of the funnest times I've had. I'm going to miss this school. I want to thank my parents for enrolling me. I want to thank Mrs. Ely for putting up with me in class, creating fun games for the class, and telling awesome stories, as well as being my mentor for my eighth grade project. I want to thank Miss Camaletti and Miss Cheyenne for teaching me how to knit, even if it was covered in drop stitches. I want to thank Madame Harper and Mr. Ecklins for teaching me French. I want to thank Mrs. Gate for helping us prepare for the pentathlon, and Mr. Maynard for teaching my favorite class, movement. I'm going to miss those classes, and I want to thank Susan and Danielle for helping me with various injuries. And finally, thank you, Miss Benton, for helping me through my middle school years. Thank you. Let us shift our focus from our dear graduating eighth grade for just a moment. I'd like to bring our attention to a special individual that we also have to bid a grand farewell with to as she embarks on the next chapter of her journey. Libby, Miss Case, Miss Libby, has taught students in all the classes that have graduated from Orchard Valley prior to this graduating class. Think about that for a moment. All the classes that have graduated started their Waldorf journey in the warm folds of Libby's kindergarten class. All the parents of these students first learned from Libby the importance of shoes that tie for the five-year-olds, that holding boundaries for young children is like carrying a tray of water with low lips on the edge, and all the specific attributes of how the four temperaments help us understand our children and ourselves. She taught all these parents what it means to be a Waldorf parent. As a Waldorf graduate myself, being a parent in Libby's kindergarten class was like coming home. It was two years of learning that every single experience I'd had as a Waldorf student was completely intentional, developmentally considered, and had a very specific purpose. Nothing was random. This experience was like watching the sun rise and bring light upon the earth. Everything made sense and showed me how this education that we all commit to time and time again was exactly the radical action that I could take in service of our society. While many dozens of students were lucky enough to call Miss Libby their kindergarten teacher, only 20 or so students were graced with Miss Case as their grades teacher. She brought the same depth of understanding of the developing child and rich grasp of Waldorf pedagogy that she had in early childhood and grew with it into the grades program. The grades program has benefited greatly from having her as a member of their faculty for the last decade. She deepened her understanding of Waldorf education and continued to bring her leadership to our school. Over the last couple of years, first as a board member and then as an administrative director, I've gotten to witness even more ways in which Libby has served our school. So she's been a teacher to our students, a coach and support system for parents, and also a strong colleague and leader in the running of Orchard Valley Waldorf School. While all faculty members are expected to serve on committees of the school, I'm quite certain I've seen traces of Libby's pre presence in all areas of governance and committee work. She's served on the board, the finance committee, the governance council, care committee, school life, and the list goes on and on. Not only has Libby contributed endless love, commitment, and wisdom to the founding and development of our school, but she has set us up to continue to evolve and deeply root into the school we are meant to be. Libby, we can take it from here, but only because you've provided us the framework to keep moving forward to meet the children we greet at school every day. The last thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you for seeing and loving and teaching our children. Thank you for helping raise strong, confident, and compassionate parents. Thank you for ending your tenure with us by shifting gears in an instant and creating an amazing beyond the classroom experience for your class. This isn't at all how we envisioned your last few months at Orchard Valley. Thank you for growing the school for us and with us. Thank you for your many, 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 many years of service to our school. 
May this next chapter of your journey be filled with grand adventures in the Vermont wilderness, a deep, deserving outbreath, an abundance of laughter and joy, and of course, most importantly, many visits to Orchard Valley. We will see you soon.